Hello, you okay? So I've never done an Instagram live before. It's obviously recently it's all been on like Zoom and Teams and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah, never I'll done a it. never done an Instagram live. So I, this is my first first time reverse. First time. Yeah, it's probably. I just thought it'd be a bit easier to get everybody on this way. No worries. So how are you? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, good. Um, today? sorry. Not training today or anything. No, no. Obviously, like I'm a reti I'm retired now. Oh, I'm a playing now. Yeah, I retired. Sure, I wasn't sure if you'd finished. Yeah, yeah. So if, yeah, I'll explain that obviously when we get yeah, when we yeah. get chatting and stuff like that. But you no, know, I'm uh, I'm retired now. I'm in the later life of uh, playing football. So. Yeah. Okay. So did you play football at school? I did. Yeah, I did. I played football at school. Um, what school? Where did you grow up? What school? Did so you? I'm from Dudley. Yeah. I thought um, you, yeah. yeah. And uh, my school was Priory Primary School, so I'm yeah, a Priory yeah. Estate. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I've been over just there. Like, yeah, just in on the way to in on the way to Dudley Town Centre. Um, yeah. But yeah, I played in the playground like with a tennis ball. Yeah. Um, basically, got stuck in goal for a bit. Yeah. Um, and then the lads kind of realised I was all right at playing football. So um, yeah, I moved on. Moved on from goalkeeping into the outfield world. Did you, did you play for the school? Did I did, school? yeah. I played for the school, yeah. yeah. Um, and back in my day, because I'm old now, I'm an old footballer. Um, yeah, when I was younger, um, it was just uh, lads teams. There was not an actual uh, yeah. women's or girls football team at the time. So, And I was the only female that played in um, played in our school teams. I mean, it was very rare. We had like maybe two, three games throughout the year. Yeah, but um, I've I've noticed there's more football available for kids in primary school now for girls to join the boys team, so it's mixed. Yeah. But not that many kids actually want to play in primary schools for girls. Yeah. Um, we have we have a couple in our club who play in the school teams, but um, so did you play? What grassroots kind of football did you play? Yeah. So um, so the reason, well, my first club was Wolves. Um, oh, okay. So got any Wolves? Wolves fans, up the Wolves, come on! Um, but yeah, so when I was at when I was at when I was at school, one of the teachers in I think it was Year Five, her husband was the manager of Wolves Women okay. at the time, and he ran the youth age groups. And um, she was like, you know, she's really good. Let us come and have a trial and stuff like that. So yeah. um, there was like under twelves. 14s and 16s and then it went straight to senior yeah. and actually I was too I was too young for, I went for a trial and they liked me and they wanted me to stay and stuff like that yeah. but I was actually too young so I could I couldn't play for a whole season okay. so I had to basically just train with everyone until I was actually at, you know old enough to, to train yeah. and Wolves were the grassroots team that I, that I started at. Okay so you never really had a local grassroots club team and it was straight in there? Well at the kind of at the same time, there was this um, club called Priory Pumas. Yeah. So there's a local guy over because so there's a big playing field at the bottom of my street where I grew up. Um, yeah. If anyone knows or heard of the Donkey Pool, um, yeah. that was where I like played, and I just you know went down there, played on my own, and I saw this football team there, and um, they were called Priory Pumas. Again, they like you know I asked if I could train, they invited me into training and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, yeah. That, but I didn't really play there for long because boys and girls couldn't mix and play in a in a proper league. Yeah, yeah. Um, at that time, but obviously now it's really yeah, um, it's, yeah, it's the it's FA really promote it. Yeah. Yeah, well, I run a boys team as well as the girls. Yeah. We've got one girl who plays in there, and we've yeah. had her since she was on this like sevens. So yeah, yeah, she's fight. They just she's just like one of the yeah, one of you the know, best. and and yeah, and like most of the women there that are in a professional league will have played alongside boys like yeah, yeah. and you know there are differences in women's and men's football and boys and girls football like not necessarily the technical tactical yeah you know socializing all that kind of stuff but it's the the physical yeah, and if yeah. if as girls and women we can you know train against physically better specimens i.e boys and men yeah. then surely we can get better and that was you know throughout my career since i you know got involved with senior football especially more at, when i played for everton especially more when i played for birmingham and then at international level as well 
we often played against boys teams because yeah. they were much phys- more physically stronger than us and faster. Yeah, so we I, kind of had to raise our game more yeah. and got fitter and, and stronger from that and had to make decisions better and quicker. So yeah. So what about then from your Wolves journey to your next team? Was that Everton? Yeah, so yeah. So from, from Wolves... Um, how did it all come about? And up yeah, so yeah, so I like I had a I had a big injury um, at the end of my Wolves career. I, I I tore my ACL and I had to have a reconstruction. And at this point, I was getting more and more involved in England. And then I had this big injury, and um, there was lots of talk like from the the higher division above, like in the Premier League, from the women's, like come and join us, come and join us. But I just recovered from my ACL injury, and I I I didn't feel confident enough to make that step yet yeah and um so it was my last season for Wolves basically and I was you know recovered well was training really well and we had a really good chance of being promoted actually with Wolves back back when in my last season yeah. and we just missed we just missed out so that would have been like the dream to like play in the top division with like my my childhood team but yeah, yeah I was playing for England as well and I got back in the England squad and stuff like that and for me to you know for me to be more successful and for me to be you know play more international games I needed to play with and amongst the best players in the country and yeah. and um yeah and and Mo Marley who was the manager at Everton at the time um she was also in and around the England international scene and stuff like that and she she asked me and I um yeah I, I you know I grasped it with both hands because there were players there that I like really looked up to and thought, yeah, man, I, w- I want to play with them and I want to, yeah, yeah. you know. So, so then, that was my next. So after Everton, it was Birmingham. Yeah, so I spent five real good years at Everton. Um, I won the won a League Cup, came runner up in the league like several times. Like Arsenal were always the like yeah, the yeah. team that were always pipping us for the league, and then we won the FA Cup, um, where we actually beat Arsenal. Um, so, yeah, I've got really great memories at Everton. Talk to us about the FA Cup then, the final day and stuff like that. Can you, you got What memories you got of that then? Yeah, so... so looking everyone, to... every kid wants to win, play, win and play in the FA Cup, don't they? Yeah, they? yeah. Nice. That's it. So, I've been lucky enough to be involved in three FA Cup finals. Um, yeah. One was at the Forest Ground, where we beat Arsenal. I was playing for Everton. Yeah. Next, Next one was at Bristol... City Stadium I was playing for Blues we beat Chelsea um, and then play, got to I didn't actually play which I was a bit gutted about but um, it was Blues Man City at Wembley um, yeah. and we've you know like it is one of the best feelings like you know match day FA Cup final yeah. but with it it's, it's, it's different like you you everyone travels together the night before you stay in a hotel and you know sometimes if you're at you know Everton and we were playing Arsenal that's from one end of the country to the other so in a normal league game we probably would have stayed over but every every FA Cup final we prepared for that I was involved in you go to hotel before close to the ground you stay over you 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 know you prepare as well as you can do set pieces you know game plan yeah. eating, sleeping, everything like that you do as best as you can to try and obviously, you know, be in just leave you know, now. Uh, yeah. That's it, yeah. And um it it is different. And then, you know, the last FA so the first FA Cup final, it was like I can't remember the numbers, but I'm thinking off the top of my head, maybe sixteen thousand people. Really, yeah. Yeah, so that was, you know not the biggest crowd um, you've had. No, th- about thirty thousand. What game was that? So well, I was in I was in Canada, um, yeah. and it and it was a quarter final England under 18s World Cup, and Canada was the host nation, and they yeah. were like absolutely mad for it. Yeah. So um, so it was a quarter final, and like anyone that knows football, England are like a you know real big country for yeah. football and. Everyone loves England, so that turnout that day was like fantastic. And then there's another one where it was in the Euros in England for the senior international team, and we played Finland. And it was the opening game of the Euros 2005, and I think there was about thirty thousand in that stadium in the state Man City Stadium then as well. So, yeah. like, just unbe- just unbelievable. Like, does does that crowd 
around you create any obstacles in the way you want to play? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I'm trying to sort of compare for the, the kids that are watching. Like, they can get affected just by what's going on the sides at a grassroots game with 50, 60 people there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I'm trying to explain to them it's something they've got to learn to deal yeah. with and sort of block out because if they want to play that level, it comes week in, week out, hand in yeah. hand. Really. Yeah. There's, if you think about it, if, for example, if there's 30,000 people in a stadium, all you really hear is like this buzz. You don't necessarily hear one person or two people. Just when you take the corners and they're giving you. Love. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> when you when you've got at a grassroots game and you've only got twenty, thirty, forty people, and one person says something, then that's completely different because you can hear them, uh, yeah. and then that could potentially affect you, you yeah, know, yeah. mentally, or it can have, you know, you could be really sad from it. Alternatively, it could be a really good positive thing. And it could make you feel really good. And I know at obviously grassroots level now, there's like a respect banner and all that kind of stuff. And you're yeah. only really allowed to, you know, say something positive. You can't, you can't actually, you know, and if that is the case, obviously I would definitely report that. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's but I know, good. I know, you know, I know it's different, you know, yeah. and, you know, but. Um, um, after, like in your Birmingham career, is that the highest level? So, in 2010... Spells. Sorry, say that again. Different spells at each team was the Birmingham spell where you played at the, the high, highest level. Well, if you're talking about being a professional, then yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Like, so, like, prior to that, Wolves, all amateur, um, lower, lower division, like, so it was the second highest division. Yeah. Then, then playing for Everton was the, the highest division domestically, but it wasn't actually professional. Um, so then in 2010, the FA wanted to make a more competitive, more professional environment for, you know, the top women's teams. Yes. And from 2010 onwards up till present day, it's now known as the FA WSL. Yeah. Um, so from from 2010, that's when you kind of sign a professional, con yeah. kind of signed a professional contract. Now, when I fully went pro was only in the latter part of my stat career because finances up until that point it meant that I had to still work. Yeah. And, um yeah. I worked at I worked at Wolves Community Trust, which is now Wolves Foundation. Yeah. Um so yeah, people still had to work. Um but now like everyone's fully professional, everyone's, you know, gets a fair wage. I think it should be more sometimes, but actually the players that play for England and the players that play for Man City, Arsenal, Chelsea, and they're earning like you know, yeah, really good, really good. And that, you know, that's not the what? be all and end all, but oh no, yeah. But I mean, compared to what you have to compared to the men's game. Oh yeah, it's not, and I don't think it. In terms of finances, it's. I don't think it should be compared. I think it should be compared, women like season upon season to for the women's league. And obviously, speaking to your girls now and people that are listening, like it could be their job, like it could be, yeah. you know, their future and their career. Um, so there's plenty of opportunities for, and obviously, people like you that, you know, work tirelessly to help people get those opportunities. That's really important too. Mm. Yeah, I mean, a lot of kids. It's just some kids are so good and don't get the chance, do they? I mean, it's just. You have to be there on the right day, and yeah, some yeah. kids can finish playing and think, "Oh, I wasn't good enough." But it's not really the case. It's just you need a bit of luck along the way, don't you? As well, it is. Yeah, most definitely. And um, you know, it's more and more females are playing now, so there's less and less opportunity for people to see you. Yeah. And it's so so like the men and the and the lads and every imagine all the men and boys that play football. There's so many. Yes. And there are so many talented young males that yeah. are playing football that don't get spotted. Now, the more and more females that join and, and start playing football, obviously the less the less likely you are to get seen. But that doesn't mean to say that you can't that you can't. Yeah, yeah. And it's you know, it's all about you essentially now, like people are, you know, putting stuff on their Instagram and 
and and and going viral and you know all that kind of stuff and those like little bits can help people get noticed yeah but if you're you know if you're improving working hard and you really love it and you know people like you are putting you know into wolves going right come and watch this player or you know really you know fight in their corner then yeah I, mean, you know, I speak i speak to one of the scouts at wolves regular about players and I always, if I think there's an opportunity for them to go and succeed yeah. at the right time, then I'll tell him to have a look. Yeah. I won't want to send them if they're only half ready. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he can move them backwards 10 spaces. Of course, back. yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, we just, it's just, just working together and giving the kids a chance, isn't it? That's it, yeah. So the England call up then and the time of England, I mean, you reached the pinnacle of any. Yeah. Sport. So how was, what was the call up like and how did it all, how did it all happen? Yeah, so. I'd, I'd played at, I'd got international experience at the younger yeah, age. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so, um, and... Just a, just like, just a progression then for each Yeah, team. yeah, exactly. I played so, in all the, all the, you know, it was under 17s at the time, then it was the 19s and then the 23s. But, but in between that, um, yeah, I, I remember my first ever phone call for one of the youth. It was, a, it was, it was a, I think it might have been a Tuesday and it, on a Tuesday at my mum and dad's like everyone came for tea like it was yeah. one of those things and yeah, yeah. the phone rang and I picked the phone up and everyone's chatting in the background and someone was telling me you're being called up for England and I was just like yeah yeah okay like and then it kind of hit me and but like everyone was still chatting in the background and I didn't yeah. I didn't really know what was going on and then I put the phone in and I said to my mum I said I think I've just been called up for England <laughs> and then my mum was you? One of the coaches it, or... No, sort of it was... Um, the yeah, like liaison officer, essentially. Oh, okay, yeah, Someone yeah. that, like, organises all the, like, yeah. trips and stuff like that. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it was just... I, I then had to basically wait for an email to come through and then, uh, like, to look at all the details. And then, essentially, that day, because they'd already started the camp and I kind of got called up halfway through. So I essentially, like... Yeah. Had to drive down to I think it was Watford. Because um, when you when you played senior level, you were one of the first part of the big groups that really got the central contracted players, weren't you? You were one of yeah. the, the main yeah. group that started the path started the pathway, really. Yeah. So there was one one year before I got my the central contract. Essentially, the central contract was there to enable people to work less. Yeah. So that they could train more and be essentially okay. better for you know yeah. club and international really. Yeah, that's what the Olympics with the sponsorships and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. because no one at, we weren't really professional at, at that time. Although we you know we were, but we didn't get yeah. the finances of a yeah. professional. Yeah. yeah. So um, so yeah, I was really you know really fortunate to be part of that group and um, yeah that's that like really like enabled me to cut down on my working hours and then I could train more and recover better and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Cool. Cool. So last couple of things from me before we look at some of the players questions. Yeah. What about coaching there for you? Is something that you're interested in? Well, yeah. Um, not necessarily football coaching, okay, fitness. But, f but from a performance point of view. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm really interested in, um, you know, helping people. I've got a personal training business, so you know. Aside from football, I'm really into fitness and yeah. health, keeping healthy, and you know, mental health, physical health, all that kind of stuff. But the gym was always massive for me. Like I wasn't necessarily like the fittest player, but I was always interested in like why am I doing, why am I running this, why am I sprinting, why am I getting stronger, why yeah. am I doing all these like power lifts. Um, and so it was always a real like um, interest for me. And at the moment now, I work with Tottenham Hotspur, their okay, women's cool. their women's department, and support their S and C coach on a on a just one day a week on a Wednesday. But started introducing the strength and conditioning program to the youngsters as well because they've never had it before. Um, the club's gone from really grassroots and it's becoming more professional now. So, um, uh, you yeah. see, that's where you're going to take it now. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, my personal training business is doing really well and I still want to, still want to work at that. And, you know, I want to keep nurturing that and making that better and helping more and more people. But yeah, I've also got that one eye on There's a lot like, of the physical side. 
Yeah, there's a lot of our players who want to delve into the physio type world in the football. Yeah. And want to do that like because they're options and working yeah. sport, the, the physio type of things. Yeah, like, you know, women's football now is not only about being a football player. Like, you've got social media, you've got marketing, you've got physiotherapy, you've got you know physical outcomes you've got men, um psycho psychological support so it's not just when when people say working in football it's not just being a footballer you've got so many other aspects of training coach yeah. manager um reconditioning coach so there's so many options and and you know avenues for people to explore to work in women's football at any level really yeah good okay let's see what some of the questions we've got off the kids Okay, let me just show you my... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, let's have a look at all that. So this is this is an England shirt that I wore in 2009. Yeah. So obviously a long time ago, but if you can see on there... Yeah, Finland 2009, the final. Yeah, yeah. so we got to the final of the European Championships. Yeah. Um, lost to Germany. Boo. Uh, There's my runners-up medal. What an achievement, though. And then that's like every every tournament you enter or... Um, yeah, you get the cap, yeah. Yeah, you get the so How many of those have you got then? So, technically, 30, I'm going to say, 32 caps. Yeah. You don't actually get 32 physical caps. Yeah. You just, that's just a figure and a representation of how many times you've played for England. But I think I've got some actual physical caps. I've got some um, youth ones. My yeah. mum's got them all in the loft. She's like hoarding. Uh, shirts have you kept over the years? Yeah, I've got loads of shirts um, from different countries, different clubs, all that kind of stuff. But my mum's, um, my mum really likes to look after those, and oh, okay. she's like, they're mine. They're staying with me. So, was your mum and your family on the journey with you all the way, all the games and stuff? Yeah, massively. Like my dad's not with us anymore, but um, he was the one that always used to take me to training. Um, like. It's raining. I can hear the rain outside now. But he always, it reminded me, he always used to take me, whether it was sunny, raining, dark, whatever, he would always take me. Yeah. Mum and the rest of the family would always be at games as well when they could. Um, so, yeah, they've been with me all the way. Good. Yeah, you where you need that, don't you? We've exactly, that. yeah. Yeah, like and, that. you know, for people that do it on their own and, um, you know, have difficult family situations, like, it's, you know, hats off to them for trying to... Yeah you know, make the most of their opportunity and obviously the more support you get, the better, but that doesn't mean to say that, you know, you can't fulfil. I mean, one, one player that I played with, Farrell Williams, most capped England player. I played with her at Everton and I played with her at England. She was homeless at one point. Really? She didn't, yeah, she was, yeah, she was, you know, but, you know, still managed to do what she loved, still managed to train, still managed to play. Yeah. Most cap play for England, like an actual, like absolute legend in the women's game. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's obviously a, a real extreme of you know someone not yeah, having yeah, any support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Still, yeah. You can still just keep doing what you enjoy. There might be that opportunity. Yeah, defo, definitely. Talking of mentioning that, actually, I was going to ask you. So, sort of the players you played with. And the uh, international level and domestically, who yeah. are the best players you've played with at those levels and the most difficult opponents? Or was you an attacking midfield player? That's right. You were like an attacking. Yeah. Midfield. So to be fair, I play, like played anywhere, played yeah, everywhere. Right. But nice but goal. main yeah, my, like I finished my my career with like probably the last five six years of my career, probably even more actually at like centre half. Oh, okay. But um. So, but opponent, best, like but, teammate wise and opponent wise, who would you yeah, say? Yeah, so it's it's really, like Farrell Williams know, is like. I know it's cool. Yeah, Far Farrell Williams is her. I'm gonna say to play with Farrah, um, her footballing ability and brain is like on a genius level. Yeah. She she like saw things that no one really, no one else really saw. Um, Kelly Smith is up there, but I'm going to say, like, most difficult to play against. I'll probably say Kelly, Kelly Smith. I mean, yeah. 
I mean, that, that those two players are, you know, can, like up there. But it's difficult because you've got so many good players that you've played yeah, with over the years. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and against, like, you know, always found it difficult to play against Arsenal. Like, yeah. always found it difficult to play against, like, Chelsea in the later half of my career. And, you know, they've got, like, loads of really Both good in international Chelsea. world-class players, so... Talking of Chelsea, have you seen the um, all the media things regarding the manager and yeah, yeah. And, and what do you think about that? Is that something you think a woman can handle a men's environment in that in that in that level in the elite level? Um, hundred percent. Like yeah, oh, you right, know yeah. what what she what she's saying is like you take Man United, Arsenal, Chelsea, and the men's team, and. Man United, Arsenal, Chelsea, and the women—it's run exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. The player, the players are just as professional. The players cover as much ground. You know, the players aren't aren't quicker or whatever, but, but everything that comes with running a professional football club or getting people on the grass to train, their outcomes and their thoughts are are exactly the same. Yeah. It's just that we happen to be like men and women. You know. Yeah, um, I think. I think tactically understanding and setting sessions up, there's there's no difference really for anyone. If you're skilled, you're skilled. Exactly, yeah. yeah. The one aspect, the one aspect I'd be interested in is how would they handle the dressing room if it was to get a bit heated and uh, like vol- you got. Imagine you got if there's a squad of twenty women, like every woman at certain points in the months, hormones that. You know, I'm not. You know, I'm not being. You know, yeah. Well, when you play, people when you in play that, that, yeah. yeah. Well, you'll know if loads of girls, <laughs> won't you? Exactly. Yeah. You, so, you know, it gets us just as heated in a women's dressing room as it does a man's men's dressing room. Sometimes it can be even harsh, and that yeah, cool. you know, I'm not yeah. saying hormones are like we're you know we're vile and whatever. However, we're all you know we're there to do a job. We're not we're not there because you know for any other reason that's our job that's what we've been chosen to that's why we've been selected and whether you argue whether you get heated whether you it's the time of the month or it isn't it's still you know it's still part of the football dressing room and everyone will experience that and deal with it in different ways yeah cool okay so we've got a question off Millie who plays for Lionel Stars under 14s what did you have to make any sacrifices so what were the what did you notice more as a as a player growing up? What were the sacrifices you would have to make? Like, yeah, I, I, um, yeah. So as soon as I finished school and I was getting more and more into, um, you know, football was becoming more of a, you know, more than a hobby for me. Like, I weren't really one for going out. I weren't really one for drinking. Um, yeah. Like there was, you know, I wouldn't say I was perfect with food and recovery and stuff like that because the the information and the education we got given when I was younger, 18, 20, whatever, yeah. wasn't really there. Um, uh, like like it is. Levels now, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Um, so I'm not going to say that I was perfect, but... Cutting out did, what normal kids and young people would normally have to do. You have to cut out the little things, I suppose. Yeah, you? so, but, but you know... Still had chocolate, still, yeah. you know, had like a can of Coke or whatever. But like, like as I got more and more into it and I got educated more, I knew that if I wanted to be a professional footballer, like, right, I, I can't do that as much as I used to or I can't do that. And, you know, like I said, I wasn't really one for drinking, or, you know, I wanted to concentrate on being right for my training and football and stuff. Yeah. I suppose it's more social, isn't it? So yeah, I'm... I, yeah, and some like there'd be times where I went out, but I didn't drink, and like I, you know, I could still be with my friends, I could still socialise, oh. and I'd oh, leave early, like you know. Good point for the kids, so you don't have to make all the sacrifices; you just be sensible. Exactly. Yeah, most definitely. Don't, uh, don't around it all the time, do they? Yeah, and you know, I'm sure people are really like buzzing to see people and have conversations and go and do stuff with people obviously because they're last year or whatever so you know those times are rare and you should treasure them we've got Lydia also from the same team was there anyone who inspired you family football players etc so like I really I really 
loved Gaza. Yeah, I'm uh, on the he, pitch. He my, not necessarily yeah. off it. Yeah, not necessarily <laughs> off it. Yeah, but yeah, Gaza, right. Gaza was like a bit like Farah. He was a genius. Like I thought, like he just his amb- ambition, his passion, his like technical work. He's you know he was a midfielder. I was a midfielder when I was younger, and I just felt like he was. Euro 96 was like my favourite um, competition and I was gutted when he missed that like you know sl- when he slid in in the back post and we was ne- you know nearly in the fight all that kind of stuff I like Gaza was my like person that I like I wanted to play like in terms of like my family would always support me and when I got more and more involved in like you know it becoming more my thing like I then had Laura Bassett, Karen Carney, Rachel Unit, and they're all people that I grew up with in the Midlands yeah, when yeah. I when we played domestically, internationally, and and they were the kind of when you get good people around you, you need to stick yeah. with them, and you, yeah, you know yeah, you know you need to be driven and and motivated by each other, and they were the four people that helped me to do that. Yeah, cool. Frankie from Lionhead Lionesses, was there any specific advice you received? that you're younger that might help us today so did you have any advice that sticks in your head that some the coach might have told you or anything like that manager um there was a period there was a period in my my playing career um which i would have which uh, looking back i really wish i'd have um like took my own advice and i but the pressures come with football especially when you play at international level and then yeah. um, there was periods of time where I didn't really enjoy it. And and then that made me not perform very well. Right. Now, obviously you've got to work hard. You've got to be, you know, put the effort in. You've got all those things come now as a footballer. You, you, yeah. You've got, you gar- you've got to do those things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But there was parts of my career that I never really enjoyed. And and when I, when I've done appearances previously, and when I've you know been to a presentations and stuff like that, I always say to to kids like, enjoy it as much as you can. Yeah. And um, I know that's really generic, but I remember yeah, no. like like I said to you, there was parts of my career where it was just like, I was too anxious about things and I was too scared to make a mistake. But that then made me not enjoy it as much. We got one off Lacey from the stars. Any advice while you're in school that could help them with progressing to football? I think we touched on that earlier, didn't we, really? It's about just with you, you had no real grassroots teams or no school team. So I think if there's an opportunity for them to play at school now, I think it's something they should try and do and try and get in that team, shouldn't they? Yeah, definitely. If you if you love to play football and you enjoy it and, and that's what you want to do, grasp every opportunity that you can. Yeah. whether that's school whether that's your, your local football team whether it's a soccer school like of a of a half term or whatever you know grab it grab it with both hands yeah definitely I've got one from I'm not sure this is off Emily I was a mascot for Birmingham you were captain when Kerris was injured against Everton oh well that's a good one yeah great good well uh, hope we've helped to inspire them and yeah Keep them is playing it, football. But one from Olivia from the Flames. Is it harder for a goalkeeper to make it as more of an outfield player? Well, I actually, mean, like, go on. Go no, on. I was going to say, as not a professional, my thoughts are is it is harder, I suppose, because there's more kids trying to get that one, one, two position for a squad, isn't there? But I don't know. You're the best one to answer that, not me. No, well, I, I think like you can think of it like that. Or you can think of it like, because I know obviously an outfield player can literally play in any position outfield. But actually, yeah. when you get to a more competitive and when you get to like, there's only one or two players for that one position anyway. So your striker yeah. isn't going to be in competition for a right back. Your right winger yeah, yeah. isn't going to be in competition for a centre midfielder. So when when you get past the development stages, it obviously becomes more of a niche. So if you're a central midfielder, you have to still compete with two, three other central midfielders to get in that starting 11. And I think it's, if you, 
if you try and flip it on its head a little bit and be a little bit more positive about it, still those outfield players have still got to compete with other people yeah, yeah. to yeah. get that that yeah. position. Yeah, you're right. Um, Oh, but obviously, you can look at that from from both ways. You can think, oh, there's only two or three squad positions for a goalkeeper, and then there's eight, and um, yeah. I don't know, seventeen, eighteen for outfield. But you know, if you're a special in scoring, you know, you can compete for a central role. So, okay, so we've got a question off Charlotte from the Stars. Who's your favourite player from the men's side of who's currently playing? Sorry, can you say that again. So we've got a question a from Charlotte from the Stars. Who's your favourite men's player that's currently still playing? Favourite men's currently? Um, oh, that's a tough one, actually. Oh, God, there's so many. Well, I suppose, so, so if like, you're a Wolves fan, who do you think is the player at the minute at the Wolves? Well, I know mean, you probably like, think that's Swedish, but you're probably just too scared to... <laughs> Jack is good. Like I don't like I, um. But no, Neves, Neves. Like, um. He's got he's got everything, hasn't he? He can defend. Yeah. He can attack. He can you know play. He can you know be that ratter in midfield. Like you know he um. Yeah, it's I, a good I, shirt, I think actually. He's playing a bit more advanced. I would for Wolves. I think I'd like to see him playing as a ten. Yeah. Well, he scores some fantastic goals, doesn't he? So. Yeah. Um. We got before we wrap up. Olivia from the Stars. Who's your favourite women's player at the moment? Okay. Um, all right. I'm just trying. Spot, just yeah. trying to think. Yeah, it's put me on the spot. Yeah. Like this. This. Like obviously, I work at Spurs now. Like. Yeah. And there's a there's a girl that's called Kit Graham, and she's really similar in terms yeah. of technical ability to like a Farrah Williams. Yeah. Um, you know, I think she's got some ground to make up in terms of physical, and I think she knows that. But um, I like, yeah, I like Kit. Um, and like for me, like I always think about a player's technical ability and a footballing brain. And I think that's yeah. just because that's how I was as a player. Now you've got like legends like Jill Scott who can run box to box and, and like create chances after chance and defend, you know. But then you've got all the international players like Europeans that like harder who plays for Chelsea who scored a hat trick last night and you know, yeah. so difficult one. Good one. I think Kit's an up cut up and coming. Um but um yeah, I mean oh God. We've got so many world class players in our in our women's league now. It's, um, and what I would say for your girls is like try and watch as many FAWSL games as possible. Um because yeah. there's there's so much talent on show, it's like we you know, it's the best yeah, that's ever been. Ridiculous. Yeah, we've got a few of the players here that we've started to watch now. Because you've got the FA player, haven't you, where you can That's it, yeah. yeah. So it's good quite good access to them. Um Yeah, really yeah, good. So, good. Um did you see the Sky One um, show recently where the, the they put the um, team, the, they had like a little academy and they were picking the players and it was on no, Sky, mate, no. Sky One. No, you didn't see that. No, the, the two twins, I can't think of the names, who were at West Ham. Oh, Molly and Keita. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, Molly and Keita and a few others and they did a little um, show where they picked players from, good players locally from around the area and they put them into like academy and tried to get opportunities to play. Oh yeah, I have actually, that. yeah. Because uh, Rachel Brown finished involved in that. I think Eniola is, um, yeah. yeah, and Molly and sorry, it's not Keita, it's Rosie. That's their surname, yeah. Name, yeah. All, Molly and Rosie, yeah. yeah. That's, that's it. I yeah, yeah. I thought it was quite good. That I think that's a, a good. I think I'd like to see more things that are happening around the different regions. Yeah, because I think, I think... Part, you could get a lot of things going like that, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely think as the women's game is becoming more and more popular, you're going to see bigger companies now, bigger, you know, worldwide companies there get involved more because, you know, people are talking about it a lot. So they want their brand to get involved. So they speak about football and they speak about their brand as well. So 
I think there'll be I think there'll be loads more of that available. Uh, Visa are involved in like a program now, which um, which is to help people, you know, once they get past retirement and all that kind of stuff. So there's loads of little things that are going on to try and you know help grassroots, help women's football in general get more um, get more notice in yeah. the mainstream. I did my uh, so. level level two to George's Park, amazing facilities there. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, we when I play when I was early in my early stages of um, seniors England, we trained there, but it was um, Burton's football ground uh, training ground. Yeah, and it had <coughs> excuse me, sorry, it had two pitches and like a little little shed with yeah. like two two toilets in, and that was it. Um, it's yeah. amazing. There, excuse me, sorry. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, mate. No worries. So, last last couple of questions. I'll let you get off. I won't keep you all night. Um, cool. No how worries. many times time did you train a week? So, when you're a professional, you train five days a week. You have you have um, two days off, but they're not completely off. <coughs> Sorry, they're not completely off. You would do recovery, so you would essentially. So when you play a game, obviously you've really made your body work really hard because that's the intense part of the week. Um, yeah. And then you'd have the next day off, but that you would recover, whether you'd go on a walk, whether you do some stretches, some mobility, and then you essentially build back up again yeah. to train and to get your body ready for the weekend. But there'd be a day in the week that you would essentially rest again so that your body adapts and recovers really well so that you can go again towards the game. So you'd have a couple of days off and they'd be strategically placed so that you recover enough, train hard, recover, and then obviously be ready for a game on a, on a Sunday or a Saturday, whenever that might be. So do you still live in Midlands now and then travel to Spurs for your sessions there? No, I live in, I live in Milton Keynes now. I live in Milton Keynes, oh. yeah. <clears throat> yeah, um, I moved here uh, no, just over a year ago. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, thanks so much for coming on, though. And um, no worries. Really no, it's been it's oh, been maybe great. One, maybe we could, um, when everything's sort of back up and running, we could maybe get you down to have a look at some of our sessions. Maybe. Yeah. Is there any fitness exercises you could recommend? That is. No, that's that? that's that, that's Frankie from <clears throat> Lioned, Lionesses. That is. Yeah, I mean, you know, I could give you a couple of. Obviously, it's really difficult in in um in lockdown, is it? Like that, my well, maybe I'll you know, on... share your Instagram page and um on the on the in our account. If I tag the Instagram, your Instagram page for your fitness. Sort yeah, of or, players, could... yeah, or sure. what I could do is just like create a little session for you, send it over to yeah. you, and then yeah. um and then you can share it. Yeah, yeah, we've been perfect. we've been doing a lot of sessions on um on Zoom with the under fourteens, yeah. two under sixteens, um, with yeah, Spurs. I've been, so I've been trying to do the Zooms to keep them occupied once or yeah. twice a week. Yeah. And my uh, daughter started doing a couple of yoga sessions and things just yeah, to try and good. match it. But yeah, brilliant. No worries. Cool. Well, thanks, thanks so for inviting me yeah. on. No worries. No, I appreciate so, See you later, yeah. guys. Oh, thanks for your questions. Yeah. See you later. Bye. Bye.